Hey, welcome to the first video of Shopkeeper Month, a theme covering things like characters that are shopkeepers, but also how you as an artist are or can be a shopkeeper. Like we talked about last week, character design benefits from context. A design existing in a blank void can be strong, but it's so much better to add elements that surround them. A story, other characters, and as we'll talk about, things like sets, props, and environments. Now, I don't know when you grew up, but for me, action figure play sets were a huge deal. They were either made of cardboard or massive chunks of plastic, things like a villain's HQ, the Batcave, the one I loved was an Ant Hill from A Bug's Life. It had a plastic core and cloth sides with little platforms and a rolled up leaf telescope. Now, as I'm thinking about it, someone who's done this consistently well forever is Lego. Of course, they offer minifigures and vehicles individually in some cases, but for the most part, Lego sets have some amount of scene or environment they're conveying. And since we're on memory lane, I remember just how excited I was just for the picture of this little pizzeria in the Lego catalog. Never had the set, and it looks super blocky by today's standards, but the amount of filling in of the imagination that a kid does made this a complete experience in its simplest state. A little group of folks running a shop, creating and selling pizza, united in purpose. Then when the Lego Island game came out a few years later, I was like, hey, I know that guy because I thought it was the delivery man from the pizza set. This unification of character design, environments, and props is why I love shopkeepers so much. Their purpose as characters can be as simple and straightforward as you'd like it to be. You can tell so much about their story and personality through the items they sell. And you can weave design elements through the character and the set so that they become stronger together. Shopkeepers are always such a cool element of things like games, too. It can be an archetype that stands out as a fresh reprieve from heroes and villains. A shopkeeper can simply be retailing items, or they can be the craftsman behind the items you're buying, which of course, on this channel, resonates super strong. In the past, I've put together a number of shopkeeper illustrations and designs as I tried to work on my prop and environment design, because you could build both together. One in particular from a few years ago that I'm fond of is Clem's Confectionery. This is a hummingbird selling honey-based candies with the aid of his bee assistants. And I like the way that it turned out and the theme of a bird that drinks sweet nectar, making candy from another animal that produces something sweet, all synergizing together. Just in real life, hummingbirds shouldn't have honey. I made another attempt at a shopkeeper, also a few years ago at this time, that's nowhere near as strong, it's called Satch's Sack Shack, but you can see at least the attempt to reuse iconography from backpacks and bags throughout the shapes of the shop. Now, years even earlier than either of those two was a crocodile that sold both jams and umbrellas called Jamborellas, and it's, it's not good, the, the idea's there, but it's just like a box in a swamp that could be executed so much better. Anyhow, another cool element of shopkeepers is that you can optimize the layout to be best viewed from the angle of the customer, almost like playing to the audience in a theatrical sense. The shapes that you use can... Um... Sorry, I'm just still hung up on Jamborellas. How about... Yeah, yeah, let's, let's revisit Jamborellas. We're going to retain the stronger core elements of this design, a crocodile selling jam and umbrellas in the middle of the bayou. His shop will better fit his environment, and it will also thematically echo the items that he's selling as well. Immediately, the vibe I'm going for is a super charming salesman who's rather dramatic in the way that he presents his wares. A little like a nice carnival barker or the ringleader of a circus. Uh, calling out the, uh, I'm sorry, Feats of wonder and amazement on display before your eyes. The costuming that seemed to fit him best was an ode to a riverboat gambler, but I wish no ill duplicitous conceit upon his moral character. Jamborella is kind, hospitable, and upfront in all affairs. All right, I, I might be done with that. I should get someone else who's, who's better with that voice. He's also a mercantile, you know, like a merchant reptile. So why is Jamborella selling jam and umbrellas? Well, I've always loved stores that are selling two completely different items. I mean, batteries plus bulbs is at least practically aligned, but I've seen places where they're selling peanuts alongside electronics. You've got Laverne's pies, tires fixed also. I think it's a really charming element of a small business person who just can't choose between the two things or has installed a side hustle or passion into their main work. 
And I'd say there's some sort of moral or warning here about split focus, like if you sell jam and umbrellas, don't be surprised when it rains peanut butter, but I actually feel a lot of kinship to the idea of being a little split between two jobs or balancing completely different responsibilities, juggling a lot of different disciplines, making the thing that you want to make while being beholden to the thing that other people want you to make because that's what does well or sells well for a shopkeeper. I think all of us in our own ways are selling jam and umbrellas. It's the nature of life. I got a pose that I was really happy with here that I can then build the shop and environment around. I decided that the shop would be a platform you could pull up and dock to, floating out in the water. And to help the umbrella theme, the main platform is a hexagon, because I don't use those enough. I wanted the shop to appear a little run down and have a large tent-like umbrella covering part of it, and big marquee lights spelling out Jamborellas. He's trying his best to present his humble wares in the best way possible. Other than a few platforms and a cash register, the layout just needs to be a simple cluttering of jams, jellies, and umbrella buckets. So that on first glance, someone can understand the idea of this design and illustration. Jamborellas? Wait, like jam and umbrellas? Apparently yes. I'm also making special considerations as I design for certain things that will be obvious next week. Laying out the shop for a semi-orthographic concept view is one thing, but the elements need to be arranged in a different way when it comes to creating a rectangular illustration. We want to sell the visual ideas of both our star character and the environment that they live in. The pose is already set for the character, but we want to play around with the elements behind him as he stands on the dock so that everything is cluttered in an appealing way. If you aren't careful, shapes that overlap with each other can create tangents or become visually confusing. So if your shopkeeper is selling lots of an item, try and lay them out so that there's clarity. Maybe you don't need to show an entire shelf full of 800 stuffed animals to show that your shopkeeper sells teddy bears. Maybe just a clean row of three sells the idea with some portion constituting the back room where more are kept. Initially, I wanted Jambrella's workbench where he created the jams to be visible, but for the illustration, at least less is more. We can also use light and ambient atmosphere to drown out some of the attention that some elements are demanding so that the eye lands back on the important parts. Checking your values is another great way of making sure there's good contrast as well. I went over my rough sketch with some painting, but I always expect it to come back and overpaint to put the right light into the piece. Being able to work in broad, lighting strokes on top of something polished can make a much more unified piece than simply rendering each piece out individually. As I built up the overpainting on the environment, I supplemented it with overpaint on the character, so that the final piece has all the vibrancy of a multicolored umbrella and jam shop while still reigning in the dominant colors to just a few. And of course, the swampy, mossy water below has done a great job of weathering and sliming up our dock. I'm really pleased with the results of this illustration, which is the trading card for July's Biko's backpack, alongside a Clem hard enamel pin. But this is just the first week of Shopkeeper Month, and I'm not going to let Jamborella stay flat. That's why next week on Shopkeeper Month, we're bringing our new shopkeeper and his shop to life in three whole dimensions, and I hope you'll be back this Sunday to see it. This has been some of the most fun I've had making videos in a long time, and hopefully even if you subscribe to this channel for jams, you'll stick around for the umbrellas too. Speaking of the comment you were just about to graciously leave below, thank you for that. We are going to get into shopkeeping as artists uh, later on in the month, you know, art business related questions. So please drop those in the comments below and we'll try and get to them. You can get Biko's backpack over on Patreon. It's a new delivery of original art in your mailbox every month. It's basically a foil trading card and hard enamel pin of the month club. You can get my course Learn Character Design over at learncharacterdesign.com. It's over 18 hours of a comprehensive character design curriculum. And of course, you can follow me at Bagel Denizen on Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch. Thank you so much for watching and have fun creating.